Welcome back to another episode of Night Owl. I was just checking the uh, save game to see when I was working on this project last. It's been about a month since I last uh, touched uh, this this city. Hopefully by the time, I mean, I took a couple weeks off just to like relax a bit, uh, even though I could take another three or four more weeks. <laughs> been working a little hard lately, but um, yeah, it's nice to like to, to take some, some time apart and, uh, and now we're back. Uh, with uh, batteries, I wouldn't say fully recharged, but I would say like, you know, like a good 60% that will get you through the day, you know. <laughs> uh, in any case, welcome back. Um, the uh, Originally, I, I was uh, planning on, on releasing a, a different thing for episode 29, which is the one currently watching. Uh, I was hoping to time this uh, with the release of the new DLC, the Campus DLC. I'm sort of glad I didn't because uh, obviously I, I didn't have the time to actually finish putting together the video. I like recorded the whole intro and like uh, the first part of it and I decided to scrap all of that because I knew that I was gonna, gonna uh, was not gonna be able to make it. Um, and then when when it was actually announced and released, there were so many videos on, 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 on YouTube. So I figured, okay, well, that was, I guess a happy accident. You will, we'll, we'll get to, to building a campus in Nidal. Uh, hopefully sooner rather than later, but today's not the day. Today we're going to be working on some row houses, as you probably saw on uh, the thumbnail and the title of the video. But uh, in order to get to that, I had to expand uh, this uh, tram network a little bit. I wanted, since we have this sort of touristy area that we worked on uh, a couple episodes ago, I wanted sort of a mass transit options around here, especially because we have the ferry terminal and uh, we also have some future bus stops that are currently not operational because we don't have a single bus line in Nidal. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get that sorted out again sooner rather than later. Maybe during a live stream. We'll see. And um, yeah, the, the, the whole thing here is just to add a little loop because uh, obviously in City Skylands, trams can't just like turn around. On, on their own, they need they need like a whole loop for the line to loop around, which is kind of annoying. I wish that I could just have like a dead end uh, track with a buffer. In fact, I, I'm gonna try this in a couple of seconds. Eventually I, I realize that I, I need to get rid of it for other reasons that I'll explain when the time comes. But I did want it to, um, you know, that, that was my original thought, have like some kind of a uh, dead end line that the tramps used to like turn around there there it is that's the buffer that i was uh, trying to put there the problem with that is that that's a two-way street so cars like need to like circumvent that <laughs> unfortunately uh, otherwise there's no way for cars to get on this uh road that sort of continues to the left of the screen right now and uh, i try to add though add those uh, hatch lines to like outline things a little bit better uh, I end up keeping those, but uh, eventually I decided to just simply get rid of the buffers. And uh, we have a similar situation here um, because of the design of the trams that we have right now. They, they're not very good for super sharp turns. They're kind of glitchy. So I wanted to sort of ease this transition. And uh, even though eventually we'll need to actually get the trams fixed. <laughs> um, but uh, for now, in the meantime, we just uh, add this uh, little extra turn that's just a little wider that way you don't uh well trains don't have to make that super sharp turn and also it just adds an, uh, a little bit of extra details to this uh part of the city that's gonna have uh just a more regular rocky uh shoreline as opposed to some of the man-made concrete ones that we've been doing pretty much for well everywhere else around the city we're starting to sort of get to the edge of the city where uh you know the urban impact is not as severe as it was on the other side of this uh, peninsula, for example, where the river is, where the marina is. And uh, a couple episodes ago, if you remember, we worked on this uh, shoreline design that is uh, composed of many props of rocks and weeds and bushes and, th and bushes and bushes and things. By the way, my voice is a little bit off. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, I'm uh, I've been through a bit of a giant cold <laughs> for the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's almost gone now, but it, there, there's still, you know, a bit of a. There's like this, it just sounds a little weird. 
that's all I'm gonna say. In any case, um, you get the point. Uh, we already sort of designed these um, these shoreline rocks, and I would just wanted to use it in, in this spot as well as in other spots that are, that are gonna come up in just a second here. While I sort of start working on a brand new neighborhood that uh, it's gonna have this uh, row houses that we've been talking about. Uh, we needed to to first lay down a few roads, and uh, we needed to sort of transition from the nearest existing neighborhood that was just, uh, well, that was immediately next to it. Uh, we worked on this uh, soccer fields or football fields and tennis courts uh, not so long ago, so this this whole area is sort of shaping up actually really nice. And uh, my goal is to like start wrapping up the different areas. I don't want to have so many like unfinished projects all over the city. I want to like start. Well, I guess I've been doing that from from the beginning of the series, but I wanted to like really start wrapping up different uh, areas and not have so many loose ends. Uh, mostly because I don't know, just whenever I, I work on something and it's like, oh, you have like all this unfinished stuff, it just doesn't. It gives you like a weird. Uh, it's just not very motivating, if, if, if that makes any sense. So I'd rather be like, oh, wow, we're like making a lot of progress on this, even though, and it's not like fake. It's like we're actually making a little a little bit of a progress, but I don't have, I don't like having a lot of unfinished things, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, that took way too many words to actually get to the point, but you, you yeah, you, you, you get what I'm saying, hopefully. <laughs> um, as always, we're trying to deal with the many terrain differences. In this case, I just wanted to have a, a different sort of design. Since we have these like modern apartment houses, I wanted to try my luck with those uh, pedestrian paths that I've used many, many times before. They're like really thin and I love how they look, but they're terrible. Uh, they, they behave very badly when you're when you have terrain differences, unfortunately. Uh, they're also like pretty glitchy. I remember using them in like when we were doing FPS uh, with Flux and, and, and J and every time I would load up the save, a, a whole section that uh, by the runways that had those, uh, that specific asset, which would be all glitchy, had like a giant hole to the void of the map of sorts. So uh, I'm, I'm being very careful with that. I haven't reloaded the save after po putting that over there. I actually have reloaded the save since I put that and didn't notice anything weird. But uh, yeah, those pedestrian paths look amazing, but they work way, way better when you don't have anything at all in the, um, just everything is flat, I guess. Is, is, is the point that I'm trying to make. Over here, I wanted to sort of uh, transition from that uh, building. I kind of took advantage of that half circle or quarter circle uh, building to like wrap around the, the little turn from the trend. And we're also gonna have a station there and we're gonna be connecting it with pedestrian paths. But at the same time, I wanted to sort of transition to a more nature side of this uh, little peninsula. Uh, I might extend the beach a little bit more towards like the ocean part of things, if that makes any sense. And uh, I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with that, but I definitely wanna knock that in just one one episode, like finish that whole thing. And it's, you know, moving forward on this uh, sort of uh, uh, pattern of finishing things, as opposed to having a lot of like gaps in, in the different parts of the city. And uh, also a second ago, you saw me put down a few ferries from, well, um, you probably saw the cinematics uh, a couple weeks ago that I made. Hopefully you enjoy those. But um, I wanted to, um, I just wanted to place a few of these uh, ferries as props just sitting there floating so that it indicates that that's sort of the terminal for the ferries. That's, that's sort of the plan there. In fact, we have this giant building on the water and that is the actual depot, which doesn't look much like anything, to be honest. It's just like this giant building that sits on the water that's necessary to for, for the correct function of ferries. But, uh, well, in just a minute, you're gonna see me add a few more details around it so that it integrates a little bit better with, with the surrounding uh, elements. And uh, talking specifically about this row houses, that you see on the screen right now. I, I just picked a building that wasn't like super tall, but also like not, you know, like two stories, even though we are actually gonna have a few two-story building row houses immediately next to these. But um, I don't know, I was kind of relatively inspired by some of these neighborhoods that I've seen in Sweden a lot, which uh, they don't necessarily have a lot of trees around there. They're kind of like, 
I don't know. It's kind of like a socialist sort of vibe from them, if that makes any sense. Um, but they look really nice, and uh, especially they look nice from from up above when you see the CD from afar. Like it's a it's a nice pattern that kind of screams Europe in general. It's not necessarily uh, a Swedish thing. I've noticed that in the UK as well, for example, um, and other countries too. But that was mostly where the inspiration sort of came from. I wanted to have a few more of these more planned. Uh, buildings as opposed, oh, sorry, neighborhoods as opposed to just random uh, old medieval streets that slowly turn into more modern uh, architecture, if that makes any sense. Uh, these are the smaller sort of buildings that I was uh, mentioning a second ago. They're, um, they're kind of ramping up this outer edge road and there's uh, connections uh, with the uh, stir props that I did with the lower road, plus adding a little you know, bits here and there of vegetation to like have a, a nice consistent uh, flow between the, the different parts of the um, of the road layout. I think, uh, I think that actually came out great. Over here I was trying to like come up with um, some kind of like industrial looking uh, infrastructure adjacent to this giant building. This is uh, related to what I was saying a second ago. I wanted this this building to integrate a bit more. I don't know what that was uh, the error was about, by the way. I kept getting that every every time I used move it on like, I don't know what specific element because I couldn't figure out, but I was just getting that error probably related to the latest uh, update. Uh, by the way, talking about the update, like everything works totally fine. I didn't experience any errors. I did get like a warning this is like totally random. I'm just changing subjects here, but I did get like a like a warning on the vanilla tree remover mod that apparently it's like not compatible with the latest version with the DLC or whatever, which is weird because it's, I think it's like a new feature from the game that tells you when mods are not compatible right from the loading screen. Uh, turns out that it is compatible. I think I was just looking at uh, TPB's uh, Steam Workshop and it apparently he said he'd fix it, but the game still yells at me saying like, hey, like this is gonna break your game. Yeah, well, it doesn't, or at least not in a noticeable way, so that's good. Um, over here, by the way, go, going back to these uh, apartments or these like little townhouses, I've been using the um, the grass sort of networks, the, the slope networks. There's a, a lot more of them now in this collection, and I can finally use them in, in a much more sort of steep configuration, if that makes sense. Um, before, uh, we only had like a handful of them that uh, were great for when the slopes are not like super, super steep, but now, now because uh, there's there's actually a lot more, like a significant amount more of, uh, of versions of those uh, grass segments. So yeah, definitely a lot of possibilities there. If you haven't checked that mod or that asset, I guess in a while, you probably should do that. Also, uh, one thing that I noticed is that by default, we're not getting any traffic lights anywhere. So I just went ahead manually and added some traffic lights, uh, just uh, mostly for aesthetics, not necessarily for traffic. There's very little traffic around these areas. And another thing that I noticed is that we have a lot of issues with, um, <laughs> Well, with the uh, death, prim primarily. Um, there's not a lot of death collection, uh, if, if you want to put it in those terms. Uh, from around the city, uh, we, we have a lot of crematoriums, but uh, they're only spawning a few beacles here and there. I've, I've, I've been told like ideas on, and tips on how to fix it. Honestly, I completely forgot about that. But um, yeah, I need to like figure that out because uh, I don't think it's gonna cause any real issues in the city to be honest, uh, the city still functions fine even though every building is yelling that they have dead people on their doorstep and no one's picking them up. But uh, I'm worried that every once in a while like buildings become abandoned and that's just a giant pain in the rear uh, to sort out. <laughs> so um, yeah, I really need to like figure out a, a way to like properly get, see if I can, see if I can fix somehow the, the, the issue with the, with the hearses picking up people and sending them to the crematorium because uh, we only have a couple of uh, cemeteries and they're mostly aesthetic ones. They're not really functional, but uh, yeah, something something's buggy about that and I need to like figure it out. Uh, in any case, uh, we're about to move into the before and after that you've probably been uh, waiting for this whole episode. And uh, as you can see, this whole peninsula got 
a little bit more developed. And uh, if you enjoyed what we have done so far, please consider giving this video a like. That's very much appreciated. If you're new to a channel and haven't already, uh, you can subscribe as well to be notified when the next one comes out. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one.